Hi guys, it's Carl from Studio In Car and we are working on a Defender 130 today, crew cab. Don't get them in very often. Uh, this one's particularly cool, right up my street, full of class. Um, it's got the white steels, the white roof, it's very, uh, yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. So I'm gonna, just gonna, we're gonna run you through what we're gonna do now. Uh, it's already started, so you, you won't see it with the interior in until it's done. Uh, I'm gonna run you through what we think is the best way of doing things in this sort of platform. We're extremely well versed in Defenders, as you know, um, but the 130s, they're, they're not as, um, don't come through as regularly. So uh, yeah, we've got to change a few things. We can mount our amps in different places. Our subs are going in a quite cool little place. Uh, front end stays the same, you know, six under the seat, 6.5 under the seat. Uh, four in the three in this case under the dash and a tweeter up top that we sort of burrow out slightly. It's having a double din conversion uh, fascia panel from uh, Mud UK, uh, which is a nice fitting fascia panel. So um, yeah, let's take a little look. It's a cracking car this. As I say, the interior is already out, sound then and all over the place. Um, the um, I should say that the doors were, were pre-done. We haven't we haven't done the sound then in the doors. Um, the sub enclosure we're we're going to make out of this box. We're going to put a top plate on this, which I'll show you in a second. Stuart's just working on it. Um, we're going to bond the top plate to this so that this becomes a lot less resonant. And we're going to treat the inside. I'm going to put two Audison AP10s in here. We're going to put uh, an oh, it's an F8.9 bit and an SR1.500, uh, the new uh, SR mono amplifier in here. Um, I don't think we can take delivery of the F1D just yet. So, um, and there is the uh, the the fascia panel that will be going in this afternoon. Speaker cables are in their locations, but they're going to come down the centre console uh, and down the back there. We're going to make a little tunnel for them. So. Uh, which will be bolted down so um, you know feet you can stand on them and stuff like that because the defenders although they're a large uh, vehicle they're very tight on space so um, you kind of have to make little runs like that so yeah in in there at the moment the 805 OD will be putting an XAV uh, 5550D in there um, removing the or, or relocating the buttons as you do with a double din uh, and, and on we go. Uh, it should be a pretty cracking system this when it's done. Uh, but we'll keep posted throughout. I'll show you different steps. I'm not going to do much time lapse on this one. Um, and I'm also going to try and keep the camera still because we keep getting complaints that I'm moving the uh, camera around too much. I'm not a videographer, guys. I, I, I uh, don't know this stuff. I just do car audio and good sound. All right. Hello. Stuart, what are you working on? Uh, I've got a sub box top. So this is the panel I was just telling you about, um, which will bond to the top of the box in there. Two AD tens will fit in there. And that should really change the way that this panel sounds. And then off we go. All right. Catch you in a bit. Phone's ringing. As you can see, we're a couple of days further in. Sobble for top plate is in. The underseat box is modified. It's been braced uh, and deadened. In fact, let me take you around the other side quick. Just check out the uh, the bracing inside the the uh, box there you can just see it so there's one there one over there should keep these two uh, metal sheets the top sheet and the bottom sheet from flexing together then that panel there will be bonded to the top panel 
uh, and that'll really help the resonance for that panel as well. So uh, the box itself is pretty large for um, the two subs that we chose to use, so we might ballast it out, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. But um, yeah, so that section there is done, the carpet's cut around there. Um, I've removed the deck and I've cut some looms that I need to extend uh, cables for the new switch panel, which is there. Um, we've put the OBD reader in there and we've managed to put the um, USB from the Sony that will be going in here into a USB, what was a charge uh, bung, but we've modified it and made it for the for the head unit. So, um, yeah, and you can see the, the cable, uh, speaker cables and everything are, uh, are in there. Um, power and ground, uh, we've come from the tray through the bulkhead batteries under the passenger seat in, in these cars uh, through the bucket under the car uh, and then come back up so I'll show you that right so let's see if we can let's see if we can even see it for a start uh, it comes through over there and then it comes over that um, you're not going to be able to see this are you there you go look see it over that chassis leg there and then if you can see up there, that's where it goes through the actual vehicle um, and into the the rack where we have the amp. You can see them both through there. Look, um, Simon, who, who owns this vehicle, wants to um, he wants to put a power cable through to the um, rear load area as well. So the distribution that we're fitting will have a spare. Um, a spare output so we can go back through can come through the way that we've done and then loop through and go into that uh, rear area it's nice because they're so far off the ground as you can see you can kind of just get on your back and and work under there but um yeah so that's how we've gone through with those signal and everything follows the same path that we um usually use and uh yeah sub box the amp rack will be going here. Uh, that's not ours, that's glue from carpet that's been put in here in the past, um, which Stu's been working on. We've got uh, the F8.9 bit 8 channel DSP amplifier and the Audison APF 1D, the brand new Forza mono amplifier that goes with, um, is designed to work with the APF 8.9 in terms of power, performance, and, and to be controlled by it as well. Um, and yeah, just popping some nice braiding on the cables. Um, this will this will be the spare output for if you want to pull power from the battery. Um, what are you saying, Jamie? So yeah, we'll carry on and uh, I will, um, yeah, I'll give you a shout when we're a little bit further along. I'm just going to, um, the 16 um, extended cables I need to do for the, um, the, the, the fascia, the, the double din relocation panel requires that we move three of the buttons. Um, each of those buttons, one has eight, the other two have four, they need extending to the other side, so I'll do that now. Um, the Sony XAV AX5550D that's going in there um, will be here on, on Tuesday, we're out of stock unfortunately, but um, yeah, and then we'll get that in and, uh, and off we go, in a bit. So we're a few days in with the Defender, doing a bit of homeschooling, all right Faith? And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you around. So the three ways done up front. Uh, the cabling's done for the amp rack. The amp rack's in. It's got a couple of spaces under it at the moment because it's just going off. We bond a lot of what we do uh, if we're using deadening because it kind of can just peel off and leave no trace at all. Um, the sub box lid uh, is done. The cutouts are done. They're fitted and in. Stu's just that you can probably hear me. He's just working on a tunnel at the moment to go between the rear seat box and the front seat box 
to keep the excess of cable in. We've got um, probably around three foot on each cable that we need to uh, tie down. We're not going to cut them down because it, it's just something we don't do. We, you know, we tend to keep cables long. If the system ever comes out, it, it makes it more realistic that those cables can be reused and stuff. Plus, cuts and solders and joins and sound. It just doesn't it doesn't really add up. So. Um, yeah, we'll have a quick look at that now. The the head unit isn't here yet, so we're just waiting for that to come into stock. It's quite a specific Sony unit that we're using in this 205 dB. Has like a, a grey satin face and an analog volume control. It's, it's, it's a cool piece of kit. Um, yeah, let's have a look. So that, that's the tunnel area that I was just saying about. That's what Stu's going to be working on right now, and I'm, I'm probably probably in his way. Here he is, look. Uh, so let's have a look at the three-way first. So, as always, it's pretty dark. Mid-base, Melee Pro. Uh, Mid-range, Melee Pro. Uh, Jamie's made up these uh, custom mounts to replace the, uh, the original four that goes in there. And then we've got Melee Legend up top. Very important, high quality tweeter. Um, we've got the, as you've probably seen previously in the video, we've still got the access to the dash there, uh, waiting for the double DIN kit to be fitted. Now we've got the kit, um, and I've done the, the button relocation gubbins. It's around here somewhere. They're all here. So that is the uh, that's the double din conversion kit. That's waiting for the Sony to go in there. Um, we've done this panel here, which you can just see through there, which is a button relocation panel because of the double din kit. It, it, it takes up a lot of the buttons that are in the original radio surround. This one doesn't fit too well because there was a there was a cutout that a previous owner had done. So we've got to figure something out with that. Um, we're either going to put some bolts in it or we're going to try and bond it, but we need to be able to remove the buttons to keep it serviceable. So um, we'll figure that out when the head unit part of this project is is you know is is in its final stages. Um, so yeah, you have to bear with me because I'm not entirely sure how these seats work, but. Um This is the under seat area. Two AP10s, custom baffle on the top. The baffle's bonded and then fixed, and it uses this uh, seat box as an enclosure, which is damped and braced. We've done as much as we can to lower the sort of brightness of that uh, metal enclosure. We've got the Audison APF 8.9 bit and the APF 1D, which is a, a is a wild first, I think. First one in a car. Then we've got our own sort of braiding on the cables that, that Stuart's been working on. There's a panel to cover the cable in there, um, so fingers can't get in there. Uh, and these two pieces of wood, the one at the bottom there and there, they come out, they're just there as a spacer at the moment. So, yeah. Onwards we go with this. We, we should be uh, complete today. We're just waiting for the... Um, for the Sony today. Stuart's making the, the, the tunnel, as I've just said. And once that's done, sound tune in and it's and it's uh yeah testing and ready to go home all right see you in a minute as you can see that's the standard fascia single din hole um i mean the, the fascia it's a land rover piece of kit it's made really well it's tough but it's only single din and we can't really modify it a lot needs shifting around to get that to be doubled in. So, what we do, that's that, is we get this doubled in fascia here. What we've got in this one at the moment is the XAV, the Sony XAV AX1000. That's their entry car play deck. Now this isn't the deck that's going in this car, but our Sony stock 
that's held in customs at the moment. So we're uh, we're lending Simon that deck to get the system off the ground, and then unfortunately we'll have to get him back across, and we'll um, we'll pop the 205 DB in here, which is a great. Um, it's their top double din deck. Um, well, their top bezeled double double din deck with the uh, volume knob, which is a you know firm favourite around here. Got some standard tools, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to speed you up because I am going to fit the uh, dab conversion uh, and things like that that this unit won't use because it's not a DAV unit. But just so that when it comes around to swapping the units, we're pretty much straight up um, swapping. So um, I've got the, the the button relocation panel in. I've had to plastic weld a new bracket onto the back of that to get over the cutout that we discussed earlier on um, and that's now sitting in there really well modified the USB plug so that now works from the Sony although the 1000 doesn't have USB on the back it has USB on the front so at the moment that will be redundant until the new deck um, and then the OBD reader is in this mount that you can move around wiggle from left to right and you can take it off and put it back on so that worked out quite well um, so yeah speed you up and off we go. So that's it, it's complete. 130. I've got to be honest, I'm a pat particularly uh, fond of this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. We've been, um, our T6 project has been um, slowed down somewhat because of, the, because of the world at the moment. So we can't get it back. So we've been able to go a little bit further with this one than we usually would. Um, so we've got two AP10s in the back, as you've seen doing an amazing job. I wish I could show you somehow how they're playing in this, but they're outstanding. Um, the APF 8.9 bit, um, a world first for the AP um, F1D, so the new Forza base amp. Um, Melee Pro mid bases in the modified boxes under the seat, as you've seen. Um, Melee Pro mid range in the bottom of the dash. Contrary to popular belief, we can actually get those things playing well uh, from, from that location. Um, Melee Legend tweeters up top and a temporary head unit. So um, that, that the XAV AX1000, which is doing a wicked job, but it just isn't the um, product that we spec'd. So uh, we'll be getting Simon back over uh, in a few days. All of our stuff is stuck in... Um, customs at the moment uh, i don't think it's anything to do with covid i think it's more to do with brexit cheers then um so yeah that's been this bit more in-depth video on this one which is great give us some feedback let us know what's going on if you've got a defender or a truck or anything else that you think that you just haven't done sound in but you like sound but you think that that car just isn't worth doing it because you don't think it can be done it can be done 
Okay, so uh, yeah, give us a shout. Thanks, I'm Carl, this is Studio Income.